Welcome to Swinger University, your horizontal enrichment program. Lessons that make you hot for a teacher all over again. Here are your hosts, Ed and Phoebe. Welcome back. This is Ed. And this is Phoebe. Okay. This is a lesson that is going to make you hot for teacher all all over over again. again. Maybe you have years of experience giving blowjobs. Maybe not. Either way, it will be fun to bone up on your blowjob skills. (laughs) So get ready to slip into something more comfortable because it's class time. So what's up next, Ed? Me, probably. Oh, yeah, he'll be up in in short order here. It's, it's, whose corner? This is Phoebe's Passion Corner. (laughs) Yes! I think this may be a new segment that we do. (laughs) I don't know. This is, it got creepy. It slipped into the creativeness of Phoebe. Okay. I'm just going to say it. I find giving head extremely pleasurable. I've watched. It's true. The sensation of the tip of the head, specifically the corona of glands, a.k.a. penis crown, is my favorite Mm. this is that ridge the edge of the mushroom that i love to nibble on with my lips i also love the frenulum which is the ridge on the neck of the glands right before the corona glands where the foreskin meets the underside of the penis since Ed shared with me that this is his sweet spot, and apparently for most men, it gives me great pleasure to tease and focus on this area of the penis. Hmm. Yeah. Very hard yet. Oh, yeah. Ed's hard yet. I told you it was only, well, yeah, it was less than two minutes. My other favorite is melting the popsicle. Mm. This is my term. I wrap my lips around the shaft on one side and move from the base of the corona and back several times, then switch sides. I love this because it feels like I'm melting one of those rocket pops between my lips. You know those rocket pops from when you're a kid? They're like red, white, and blue. Star Spangled Banner, baby. (laughs) just go up and mm. okay uh th- oh whew, getting distracted okay then i top it off with grabbing the penis with my hand and gently smacking the frenulin on my outstretched tongue which makes a great sound pretty much like that and it feels amazing okay whew. All right, is everyone hot for teacher now? I am. Okay. Oh, are we still continuing with this? Are we taking a break? (laughs) Oh, God. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, I I, I can get through it. Okay, cool. (laughs) I'll do my best. I may have to take my pants off, but... I figured. Okay, so why do it? Why, you know, why give head? Why? Yeah, what's up with blowjobs? Right, why perform play show? Because there's a certain vulnerability, right? You have to surrender your body and this very vulnerable part of you to your partner. You have to trust that they're not going to use any teeth, that they're going to be gentle, you know. They're not going to be Lorena Bobbitt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. I just just ruined the whole thing for everybody who is listening. And there goes the chubby. (laughs) 
it's also a form of intimacy for both of you. And I discovered it has this great power oh, yeah. that I have control over Ed's body and I can make Ed's body do what I want. Oh, yeah. She loves making me claw at the sheets and mm. wiggle around and... Yeah. It's it's that part is really intoxicating. We should yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. Whew. All right, class. Sorry. <laughs> so how you does need, this start? Uh, I don't know. Am I got all distracted. Communication is part of this whole process. All right. Absolutely. So, no shock. Right. You know, you need to focus obviously on what feels good to you maybe that's not obvious i'm sorry this is how i started i focused on what was good felt good to me first i tried to do what everyone was doing in porn and then you're all in your head and you're thinking oh i should do what he likes and you're just you're in your head you're not in your body you're not doing what feels good to you if you're doing what feels good to you you're going to get excited you're going to get turned on you're going to have a pleasurable experience if you're and experiencing pleasure your partner's going to be explore ex why is that so hard to say your partner is going to be experiencing pleasure i got all excited there oh. yeah well and a woman who's really enthusiastic obviously she's enjoying herself yes is really hot like 100%. That, that's all for me. <laughs> I am all in it. Because if she's like, holy shit, this chick really likes doing this. That's hot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Phew. All right. So. But when you're starting out, you, you do want to have some communication. It would be nice to say, you know. Obviously, talk to your partner. Hey, what do you like? What don't you like? What freaks you out? What are you nervous about? These are the things I like to do. And then you can have this dialogue, right? Like, for example, I could say to Ed, I really love sticking balls in my mouth. And Ed would say, <gasps> I'm a little bit nervous about that. Which Just is true. Be gentle. I'm a l if you're gentle, you it's can play okay. with the balls. So now I know. I can't be super aggressive and I start off slow and I don't suck the fuck out of him because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to freak it out and then he's not going to let me do it anymore and I really want to do it. So hence the communication, right? Uh, okay. So you find out what each partner likes. You hone in on that technique. You know, don't don't get crazy and try to do like five different things in one session. If you're doing it for the first time, just perfect that one thing. Right. Okay, maybe add in a second one, but don't go cray cray. Yeah, you can focus on one thing. This is kind of like a learning session. You're going to ask some questions, try a few things. And when you find something that they really like and that you can maintain for a few minutes right. it's going to work out pretty well right the other very important part of communication is do you like cum in your mouth maybe you do maybe you don't that's pretty important because your partner wants to feel comfortable releasing and he wants to make sure you're comfortable and you don't want to kind of ruin that experience if somebody's not comfortable. Well, and just like consent, it's good to know ahead of time because it's either something to look forward to or at least something to be aware of what's going to happen at the end. Right. Nothing like thinking you're going in for a touchdown and find out you're going to have to punt. Right. Right. So, you know, talk about that, you know... Um, I'm sure 
I mean, maybe you haven't done your research. Maybe you've never had someone come in your mouth. At first, I didn't like it. It was a bit shocking. No one discussed it with me ahead of time. And the force of the cum shooting down the back of my throat was like, oh my God. I had no idea there was such force behind ejaculate. A million miles an hour. So it's a little shocking. So obviously, yeah. you know, you're having a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Phoebe, hasn't anyone ever told you don't talk with your mouth full? <sighs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, we are talking to experienced swingers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But but then again, I was thinking, well, maybe someone has been with their partner for so many years that they and they just said, no, I just, I never do. Like, you know, some people have a rule. I never do anal. I never have cum in my mouth. And then they adhere to the rule, but then they never really go Try back it. and revise it. They go, well, sure. why don't I? Maybe I would. What are the reasons why? Oh, because it was just a rule. But but what are the real reasons? Oh, you know what? I don't have a reason anymore. 20 years ago, you had a reason, but maybe now you don't have one. And so maybe now you try something new. And if you can get your partner to eat lots of pineapple, <gasps> oh, it makes yeah. it very sweet from mm. what I've heard. Yeah. There's a couple foods like that. We go into that uh, later. Maybe not in this podcast, but somewhere we oh go God. into that. I know because I've done the research. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get some pineapple. <laughs> you have to do it two to three days ahead of time, though. Damn consecutively. It. I know. Because it has to get into the system. Oh, well. And you have to, and then you have to flush out the old before the n new pineapple flavor oh, baby, filters I'm down. I'm all ready to flush. <laughs> you got to clean out my pipes. <laughs> I have to clean out your pipes? Hey, you know, it's a mutual thing. I clean your pipes, you clean my pipes. It's all good. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Oh, sure. Whew. This episode. Oh, my Lord. Come into your mouth. Okay. Did we cover all that? Yes. Take some getting used to. Communicate. I talked about how I started off by... Actually, I didn't tell you how I started off. I started off by licking it and tasting it. And eventually, I swallowed it. But honestly, it wasn't my choice. It just kind of happened. There was no communication. It was a little shocking. And I didn't like it. But later, with the right partner, I you learned to love it. it right? So I modified my rule. Early on, I had a bad experience or shocking experience. I'm like, oh, that's nasty. I label it as such. But then later in life, I reviewed that and went, Oh, you know what? That's not so bad. So there you go. Now it's actually a bit of a challenge for you. Why? Hello? Huh? To get me to actually <laughs> get there. <laughs> Come in I know. Mouth. Ed is like the zen of the... He's the guru of the long-lasting hard-on. So if you want to have 20 orgasms... Ed is your man. <laughs> Holy shit. I almost spit my drink out. <laughs> I... It does happen that way sometimes. It does happen. It, it has stamina like the gods. All right. Preparation. You got to get him in the mood. Not like that takes very much, right? I'm in. It's a mental thing, right? Hey, let's fuck. That's all it takes. Mm. Done. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, no, that's but... all it takes. <laughs> I'm that easy. Hinting or telling him what you're going to do to him later. You whisper in his ear. <sighs> right now, it's me basically turning my office chair around uh, and scooting over 12 inches to Ed's chair because... We're both working from home. <laughs> hey, want a nooner? I'm telling you right now, stand-up desks are great. Oh, yeah. Just we make have sure the camera's desks. off. Whee! 
and her standing over her desk and me standing behind her. It works great. That that was really good. Yeah, that was good. Awesome. Although, do we need we need waterproof floors? That, that's <laughs> I a know. Whole other thing. Uh, that's a whole other thing. So you give him a heads up, or you could just surprise him mm. and just rip off his pants in the kitchen while he's making dinner which i have done and i'm sure a lot of people have done and it's super sexy and super hot yes it is the mood uh oh we are talking about the mood you the giver uh make sure you've got things comfortable for you um you know if you want lighting if you want smells if you want to be wearing lingerie if you want to use lube while you're um giving fellatio i'll go into that later um you know uh, a moist cloth towel yeah set it all up if you want to create the mood you can do that if you want to just do it down and dirty in the kitchen spontaneously just do that it's kind of fun to do the whole like warm washcloth there's like a it's like a preparation thing like it's like a tea ceremony yeah mm. <laughs> teas ceremony it's a teas ceremony get it all warm and <laughs> ready yes okay what other supplies oh hair tie carry um, one in your go bag yes good yes, tip yes uh water by the bedside very very important hydration um, yeah uh cleanliness so you know the the teas ceremony you know it, you know maybe he didn't have time to wash up maybe you didn't give him a whole lot of notice so you just scoot into the bathroom get a nice warm washcloth wash him before you you know start to drive him crazy right mm. it's all part of it it's terrible I know. Okay. Uh, let's Shrubbery. see. Shrubbery. Shrubbery. Uh, for both partners, it's nice if they have an aversion to shrubbery. That, you know, they trim on a regular basis. I don't recommend you doing that. Well, actually, I don't know. I have had someone trim my shrubbery before when not everything was lasered off and that was a kind of it's it was a, pretty sexy actually it was a, it was a sex it was a precursor it was a tease up to you know oral sex it was i have really hot. i have shaved a woman before and it's pretty hot right yeah okay so washcloth yeah. hot washcloth uh-huh that worked okay so it's like good. prepping yep. your meal <laughs> or, or or dessert mm. or the the le acres of land is that uh, just explain this acres of land thing i still don't understand why the breasts are referenced as acres of land in this movie because <laughs> acres of land to me feels like the whole body like mm. no if you've got like very large breasts and they're being served up like in a bustier mm -hmm. then it's large tracts of oh, land tracts of land because it's breasts as far as you can see oh of course you're very short-sighted and you know boobs right in your face but... gotcha what movie was this pretty sure it was a mel brooks movie mm-hmm and those who are listening, and if you know me, and you know that I should know this reference, I know. I'm sorry. I know. I was counting on you, Ed. I know. I was counting on you. I'm like the movie reference guy. I know. But as all far right. as I know, anybody who knows that I should know that isn't listening to this. So I'm all right. <laughs> okay. So everyone knows about trimming their shrubbery. No one really roll, is interested in a hair up the nose. Ed trims his balls all the way up the shaft. Um, and Trim the top great. a little bit. Keep it yeah. short, neat. Mm -hmm. And it's great. That way I can play anywhere I want to without a hair in the way. 
That's right. And I like it. And Ed knows I like it. Mm-hmm. And because Ed likes what I like and Ed likes what I do to Ed, he does it. Happily. Because it's fun. Anything to make it easier. And it's exciting. And it feels good. Okay. And for the gentlemen who are considering shaving the uh, lower parts, uh-huh. it makes your penis look bigger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you didn't have it. It'll add at least an inch. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, I think most people have discovered that. But that is a very good point doesn't hurt diet we talked a little bit about oh i think i do have it in here oh i do i do i do so you don't even have to listen to another episode diet will change the taste of the cum yes being hydrated is nice because then the the taste of the semen isn't going to be as strong so if you're well hydrated that's good good things to eat that will change the flavor and again you need to do this about two or three days ahead of time or just regularly yeah celery apparently reduces the saltiness of the flavor and ed i happen to notice you do not have a piece of celery in your bloody mary over there i do not but i did give you a piece of celery last night two but i ate the other one Mm. Nah. yeah yeah cranberries wheatgrass oh i had a i had a bunch of cranberries today okay we uh cinnamon <laughs> lemon peppermint parsley that makes sense too pineapple which ed mentioned oranges kiwi blueberries and plums all help with the flavor of cum and it'll make kind of sweet tastes better anything to add there Ed? no but uh i love pineapple i know i eat it all day long except for it chews up the top of my mouth after a while the acid in it all right so if you know you're gonna have this session or you know that you're going to go to a swinger event although everyone uses condoms Eh, okay that doesn't but afterwards when you need to reconnect with your partner because you've had amazing sex with you know other people and your partner's had amazing sex with other people and you want to have that reconnective super uber duper amazing sex without a condom then you want to make sure not to eat Go ahead. I was just going to say, there are some swingers that regularly <laughs> engage in that. and That's true. I think the... It's called barebacking. W- well, but that's vaginal penetration. And as, oh, that's as far true. as I know, and true. check with your doctor, because I am not a doctor, although I'd happily give you a pelvic exam. Oh, my Lord. As far as I know... <laughs> Oral sex and the risk of transmission is fairly low. And so for Mm -hmm. those people who would be interested in blowjobs and maybe swallowing, it's pretty low risk. Although those people who are playing really safe will do like dental dams and condoms for oral Mm -hmm. sex, etc. So obviously do what you're comfortable with. But there are some people who are happy having come play mm-hmm. during swinger sex right i don't so, happen to be one of those guys that typically does that but you know typically you've never done that i haven't no it's too much to manage it locks you in pretty much to one couple and you yeah. really have to trust them that they're not playing outside your your group but we covered that yeah in our other episode so what are these bad things that you don't want to eat ed well you what know, are these things that bb's not gonna like they and ironically these are the things that just i love in general 
Well, and you love them too because I love them. They taste good. But oh, some of them I don't like. Sorry. I'm just reading. Yeah, there's a couple of them in here. Anyway, I'll go through the whole list. But these are the things that make your pee smell funny. If your pee smells funny, your cum's going to smell funny too. <laughs> Probably tastes funny. And don't drink your pee. It's not a good thing. Oh, unless you're a bear Into gorillas. That. No. Even for survivalists, do not do it. Oh, that's not right. A thing. It's he distilled the water off of his pee in the desert with plastic and the heat. Yes, yeah. but that's water, not pee. Pee. Yeah. Correct. Okay, back totally on track. Totally off track. There. Okay, let's go. <laughs> if you're into that, no, you know we're not like. Got it. But we're not into that. Okay, you go. Maybe. Flavors. Broccoli. Cat broccoli has a very strong smell. Apparently. Cabbage. That I same get. Same thing. Cauliflower. Yep. A little bit less than broccoli, I can imagine, but probably. Asparagus. Oh, definitely. If At you least happen for to have, right? 40, what is it, 40% of the population? 20? I don't know. Well, it's not that many. We both have it, and you have to have the specific gene to smell that. Asparagus is stinky pee. I know. Oh my it's God, really it's terrible. I wish I didn't have it. Okay. We're blessed, honey. Beans. Beans. And that goes two ways. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one way and two. One and two. One and two. Ah, I see what you did right there. No sneaking farts. So, yeah. if this woman is going down on you, you don't want to have to be fighting, not farting in her <laughs> face. I'm telling you, it ruins it for everybody. One, you're concentrating on not farting. Right. And if you happen to squeak one out, oh. her face is right there. <laughs> not going to be good. Trust me. Terrible. Terrible idea. Okay. What Garlic. else? Garlic. Yep. And unfortunately, caffeine. And I would right. probably specify it's probably coffee. Right. Right. But you can, I mean, most people have, you can get around it. Most people have their caffeine coffee in the morning. And you all know what the coffee bee smells like. But as you hydrate during the day and the caffeine gets out of your system, Drink lots not of water. a big deal. But... It can affect it. So, right. you know, think about that. Smoking. Mm -hmm. So nicotine, that smell, the, that kind of burnt whatever, it gets into your bloodstream, it gets into your system, and it comes out. <laughs> comes out. Ha. Dairy. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Drugs and alcohol. So alcohol, unfortunately, can also affect the flavor so if you're right. at a swinger event and you're drinking heavily it's gonna come yeah, out like a vodka a shot but in totally wrong way right fast food so get your paleo on or whatever healthy diet you're on right. and avoid the fast food it's typically high in grease and high in a whole bunch of other Preservatives. stuff not so good yeah, uh, but the dairy that I do consume is cheese uh, every so often, and I love my cheese. So, uh, but you don't, I don't know, you don't consume a lot of cheese. It doesn't really matter for me, but for you, yeah. I guess, kind of weird. Cheese. All right. So, why is all of this so important? Well, if you know how hard it is to set up a swinger date... Why not just take the extra measures to make one night or the night more epic? Stack the cards in your favor. Same goes for your life partner. And we already talked about priming the pump. If you know you're going to eat stinky food a few days before, just get them out of your system. Do it a few days before. Drink your water. Drink your water. Etc., etc., etc. Now, again, you're mostly playing with condoms. You're not coming in someone's mouth. But 
if a fart sneaks out, you know, you just avoid it. Choose carefully. You go to dinner that night. We do this all the time. We go to dinner before the swinger party and we're like, oh, what that has mean? beans. Nope. No beans. That has no garlic and cabbage. Nope. No garlic. Nope. We're like, shit, where are we going to eat tonight? <laughs> right? No onion, no garlic. Right? Because as much as you brush and as much gum and mince that you have, that shit sticks around. You want, you don't want to offend anyone. If one person is offended and that was that one person, that was the opportunity that night, you're done. And then you had no sex. Hmm. It's stacking the odds in your favor. Prepared. Be prepared. prepared. Right? All right. Gag reflex. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Tell me about the gag reflex, Phoebe. <laughs> It's it's a little bit of a challenge. It I had an issue with it in the beginning, but I did a lot of reading this and this was like years ago. Um and I did some reading and I did some practicing and you really have to focus on relaxing your throat. Ask your partner to go slow. And one of the things that helps me, especially when the penis gets back into the towards the back of the throat is to exhale so you're kind of pushing the air out and that helps with the gag reflex try it with your toothbrush i do this all the time when i brush my tongue oh my god it's i can't the... look at you brushing your teeth anymore i'm going to be thinking about you oh just wait till tonight sucking <laughs> a lollipop so you're brushing your tongue blah, 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 blah. And then, sorry, that was so attractive. Blah. You're brushing your tongue. And then, you know, you feel a little gag reflex start to happen. And you just blow out while you're brushing your tongue. Totally fixes it. It's amazing. So you can practice. Yeah. Right? That's a good tip. I, I a, do it all the time. It's a great tip. The other thing that works amazing, probably better than blowing or exhaling out, is using lube. Lube on the penis while you're giving head makes it so much easier. It reduces all that friction uh, around the teeth, around everything. And it just... It, I don't know what... I. I it's amazing what friction does. It reduces all of it. It makes it so much easier. And if you're using the flavored lubes, like the chocolate or the cherry, she gets now dessert. your partner's penis tastes like, you know, Candy. creme brulee. And you're like, <laughs> honey, my penis always tastes like dessert. It's amazing. So good. It does and work. It does work. There's less uh, risk of you dragging the teeth on your, you know, poor partner's penis. And um, plus, there's the whole you, like lubing and stroking yes. before you even get to the mouth thing. And it's, there's nothing bad about it. I mean, not a thing. And you can typ typically go a little deeper with it also. Yes. I know. That's true. Ooh, all, right, all right, all right, baby. How do we get started? I already know this is going to be a long episode. Okay, it's worth it. <laughs> it's worth every how, how you doing megabyte. Over there? You're so comfortable in those shorts over there? Um, I'm doing all right. They're a little, a little tight, tight but uh, you can manage. Okay, the position. Get practice with something that's comfortable. I. For me, being bent over Ed while he's laying flat, that's not necessarily a good position for my head, neck, and jaw. So it puts a lot of pressure and strain on my neck. I'm trying to hold up my head. I'm trying to open up my jaw. And for me, it's not as uncom as comfortable. What's more comfortable is when he's standing and I'm on my knees and then I can approach him in that way. That's really comfortable for me um so you know sometimes i put a little pad or pillow under my knees um 
when I'm being a little more kind to my body, usually I just get so excited. I just like kneel on the hard floor, but be kind to your body, put something under your knees Mm. and um, then you can last a little longer, which is great. Yeah. So good. So tease him, you know, if you want to and do his clothing slowly, rub his shaft through the underwear and then you can perform some of these cool, fun techniques. All right, baby. Tell me about the tricks. All right. Tricks are, this one's called a head tease. Wrap your lips around the shaft, move up and down while missing the head. Oh. I know, I know. It's kind of like the, it's kind of like the the lollipop thing. What was my, my popsicle melting the mm-hmm. popsicle? This is the opposite of just the tip. Yes, this is just the shaft. Yes, <laughs> you're getting the shaft, baby. Mm. That's it. The whole thing. All right, the blow up doll. Open your mouth. And then clockwise and then counterclockwise in a slow and purposeful manner, go around the penis. You know, you're not going to get very far because your mouth isn't very deep, but there's this kind of hovering thing. Kind of waving it around. Kind of with the lips kind of gently touching, kind of with this air around it Hmm. right i know right Mm. lollipop apparently that feels amazing uh the lollipop you lick from the shaft to the tip hovering at the hole in the center and if your partner's into it and you're into it you could stick your tongue into it and then Trace the tip of his penis with your tongue and then repeat all this with no lips. Mm. Right? Mm. You can add a variation to that by starting the licking from underneath the balls. Sounds fun. Right? I know. The lollipop. The slide. This is where you force his cock through your lips and slide it in. Of course, be careful of the teeth. Add a hand so that the whole shaft is encased. Oh, yeah, I like this one. Yeah, yeah, you do like this one. That way he's all... I like a lot of hands involved. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You like to, like, shove it in i do which is why blowjobs really kind of drive me nuts because i (laughs) Mm. (laughs) kind of a tease i have to be gentle (laughs) (laughs) i know because you know you got teeth involved and you got the other partner and it's a delicate it's this whole breathing thing the breathing and the head and like you know not breathing because you've cut off her air supply it's you know it's (laughs) It's rough. <laughs> I know. All right. The so oh, wait, wait, wait. Did we do the slide? Oh, the side slide. It's the same as a slide, but then you'll twist your head to the side without losing contact of the coronal ridge and move gently move your hand up and down the shaft while you're doing that. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's it's the side lip lock. Side lip lock. Called the side slide. We could we could rename that to the side lip lock. I like it. Thumb lock. Oh wait, sorry. Thumb block. Place your thumb at the base of the penis to block the tube. Hmm. While he's coming, and you know you're still passionately sucking the head, and apparently this feels amazing. But Ed, you can like. Talk oh, that'd to this be good. Whole thumb yeah, lock. You, mm, you should block try that thing. Mm, so yeah. Ed does this when he's 
masturbating. What? I don't masturbate. <laughs> I do all the time. So ex- explain how this works, because obviously, uh, dude, I don't have a penis. Well, there's multiple reasons for it. One of them is not making a mess. Right. But it feels good, doesn't it? It kind of does. You're kind of like holding back this like big pressure. But um, it's also fun to just let it go. <laughs> let it go. Just let it go. <laughs> All right. So it it has it has a different type of sensation. You can experiment with that. Yes. The butterfly flutter is where you flick your tongue near the tip when you're stroking his shaft up and down with your mouth. So you've got your whole mouth going down. And while you're doing that, as you come up to the tip, you flick with your Mm. tongue. But your lips are still wrapped around. Oh, my. I know. I I do that a lot. That drives you crazy. I love it. Mm Mm-hmm. I just like watching you play with it. <laughs> you can do anything you want. I'm just going to lay back and you just go to town. And I just watch. It's like, oh my God, look what she's doing. It's crazy. <laughs> the traveling figure eight. So the cock is in your mouth as deep as possible. And then you do this figure eight movement up and down the shaft. Kind of. As okay. you like move out and then you go back down. So it's kind of wiggling. It sounds like a snake swallowing a. Yeah. It's like the Phoebe wiggle. You love the Phoebe wiggle. I, I do love the Phoebe wiggle. I know. I love wigglers. Wigglers. Wigglers and jigglers. Mm hmm. Okay. And then, you know, your standard. Deep throat. Deep throat. I don't know if it's standard, but it's a very common term. You... It's been around since the 70s, yes. since the first movie was made. Deep throat. <laughs> you lay on your back. We've, back. we've we've tried this several times. And you your works better when your head is slightly off the edge so that your your throat can get into proper alignment. We learned this in CPR training. <laughs> Yeah, yes, we did learn some of that in CPR training. <laughs> oh. And so you can, you know, turn your head uh, so that your mouth and throat are almost in a straight line. And then the the your partner, the one with the penis, fake <clears throat> or real, uh, cool. will start slow as they're, because they're the ones who are in control. Right. So they you really have to trust them. So this is a little bit of a role reversal. Right. So whereas before Ed was at the mercy of me and now I am at the mercy of Ed, who's, you know, doing deep throat. Right. So the receiver, a.k.a. Fucky, needs to relax. (laughs) The whole. (laughs) The whole. Through the natural, because your natural tendency is going to gag if the fucker goes. <laughs> she calls me that all the time. You fucker. Fucker. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a fucker. Fucker. Your gag reflex is going to stimulate if they don't go slow. So you need to go slow. And then, you know, you, you experiment it, this clearly is an advanced technique. You have to have some before communication. You have to have some communication while you're doing it. Because right. it's a very vulnerable position. Um, you're dealing How with deep, breathing. Breathing. You're right. dealing with jaw reflexes, vulnerable parts of the body. So, you know, there's obviously some, you know trust and communication involved in this technique and you know you just take your time take your time experiment and have fun with it but be careful right all right be prepared for the uh, tap out there guys yeah all right melting the popsicle i already told you about that in the beginning that's my favorite one it's terrible okay 
We got some couple add-ons. You can use one hand or two hands. You can oh or I more. Forgot about this. Oh yeah. If you're at a swinger event, you got more hands. Ooh. More hands and more mouths. It's perfect. Right. One of my favorite things is when one girl's on one side. You've seen this in porn. One and you've seen it in real life. One girl's on one side of your cock and another girl's on the other me on the other side of your cock. Mm -hmm. And it's nice. Right? And our faces are there and our lips are there and our hands are there. Oh god, it's so sexy. I love sharing your penis with somebody else. Uh, I'm happy to share, honey. Anytime. It's so fun. I've even shared a mouth with another guy. That was fun too, and I didn't know how that was going to go, but that was fun. What? What? The, Wait, uh, what? Party mouth? up Where? in the hills. Yeah. There was that one girl who was oh so shy and reserved, and she was not gonna play that night. And then all of a sudden, she's on her knees in the living room with two guys using her mouth at the same time. <gasps> oh, I. So you're. I get it now. So just f so I understand. Here's the visual. You're talking about. One girl on her knees with your penis in her mouth and another guy's penis in her mouth at yes. the same time. So this girl had a mouth big enough to accommodate your Two penis. <laughs> oh, my God. And someone else's. She had the Mick Jagger mouth. She, she was ambitious. You were double. She was double dipping. Yeah. Wow. DP mouth. I do remember that party. That was fun. And they're no longer in the lifestyle. It's so sad. Those people who hosted <sighs> Those the best 18 parties. months, everyone. The 18 average. Months. You're in and then you're out. Back to the blowjobs. Okay. Uh, you can do other things, too. These, The add-ons are one hand, two hands, drag your hair. Cross his naked chest if you happen to have long hair or, you know, you put on a wig for the occasion. Drag your hair across his inner thighs, back and forth across his penis. It feels mm. really good. It's mm -hmm. like this tease. It's so nice. Um, I like to blow cool air or exhale my hot breath on the tip. So sometimes mm. I exchange those two techniques, which is a nice contrast. Uh, nibbling, of course, because I love to nibble. She's a snacker. <laughs> a snack. Um, use your lips. Look into his eyes. I do that a lot with mm -hmm. Ed. I'll look into his eyes. I'll I'll lick instead of just suck. Um, caress his balls. You know, with your hands. Lick them. You can put one or one or both balls in your mouth depending on the comfort of your partner. Be gentle. Be gentle. Uh, circle the tongue around the corona, which we talked about before. Um, oh, and we also talked about slapping the tongue. Oh, slapping the penis of on your tongue and on your face. That's fun, too. The cheeks sometimes. Yeah. I like to spank you with my penis. You do. You were doing that earlier today. Mm -hmm, I right was. Right my ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're a naughty girl. And I always am rubbing my hand on Ed's chest and like grabbing his ass and rubbing his inner thighs. I love like just which, harassing his body while I'm giving his head. Giving which, by head. the way, yeah. is great for guys too. We should do a whole kind of lingus episode too oh okay well you have to write that one i, I wrote one? this one okay because i don't know i i do know what you it's like you know but i've only done it like twice wait are you saying i'm a mouth whore <laughs> you're more of an expert than i am i do like eating pussy because yeah you know you i've been doing it for longer you yeah, exactly all right that's the next episode you have to give all right i'm gonna have to write that yep do your Gentlemen. research baby here it comes do your research bye bye all right well above all else 
Ed, what is the thing you love the most? Enthusiasm. Yeah. And love it. Why is that? Well, because if she's enjoying it, I'm really going to enjoy it. Yeah. There's There's an ego boost to it. It's exciting. And come on, guys. There's nothing hotter than a woman who's all excited in your lap mm -hmm. going to town. It's hot. Mm -hmm. And you can... You, don't tell me that you haven't seen porn. There's a difference in porn between the scripted ones, the ones who are like getting paid and looking at the cameraman for direction. Yeah. Boring. Versus the people who are really into it. Right. Fucking hot. Which is hotter? The ones who are into it. The ones who look like they would do it even if they weren't being paid. Exactly. Why? Because it's so much more so real. Because they're hotter. feeling it. <sighs> so, mm. sex is fun. Yes. As you know. And, you know, communicate and experiment. Have a good time. Mm -hmm. Expand your horizons. Try some new things. Try some new things. With some new friends. <laughs> With some new friends. Or we... old friends. Or Right. As many friends as you've got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, everyone. Thank you for coming to class. Mm. We'll be adjourning now. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> Before you turn off our podcast to take care of all the vanilla things pulling you away, please reach out and give us a review. I am the first to admit that it's much easier to give a five-star rating, which we appreciate, but if you could take 43 seconds to type a review, we would love it. If you want to share a personal story, ask us questions, or share your comments, you can contact us at Swinger University at gmail.com. Check us out at swingeruniversity.com where you can find links to our Twitter and Instagram feeds. Thank you so much for listening to Swinger University, your horizontal enrichment podcast. <laughs>